This is a leopard gecko. Maybe one of the most common lizards that you can find in the pet hobby, but what if I told you they're not actually the best reptile? Today we're gonna go over three reasons why leopard geckos kinda suck. My name's Adam, this is Littlefoot, you're watching Wicked Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now I will say off the bat, leopard geckos are pretty awesome. I'm kind of stretching to find reasons why they're not great. Put some respect on my name. I'm gonna make this list more of, these are three reasons why you might not want them, and I'll give you examples of better species or species that might be better for you if you identify with these negatives about leopard geckos. But overall, let's not kid ourselves, Leopard geckos are freaking awesome. But this is not clickbait, and there are three main reasons why leopard geckos aren't the best for some people. And let's start it off with number three. We'll count it down, I guess. Size. Now this might be a plus. I often talk about this as a plus because these guys were talking about like eight, nine-ish inches. Now there are smaller ones, right? Females are usually smaller than males and there are larger ones and there's even giants and super giants, which get kind of large. But we're talking about, let's call it eight and a half inches on average. And when it comes to their weight, we're talking like just north of a hundred grams. And that's if you get a big one. We're talking 50 to 80 grams most of the time. So this is so tiny, like so tiny for an animal. And the reason that this is a negative is simple. This is an animal that might be injured rather easily if you've got dumb big ape hands. Now I got tiny human hands, but even these are like ape hands in comparison to this animal, which has tiny little footsies and a tiny little body and a tail that detaches. And that's the other thing. Now you might recognize the title of this video because it's part of a series. This is totally different than Bearded Dragons Suck, which is a uh, pro Bearded Dragon video with a negative title to bait you in, or the Ball Python one, which is a pro Ball Python video with a negative title to bait you in. Now this is exactly the same, but the thing that's negative that I will say about their tails is that they fall off or they can detach. Now I've had leopard geckos forever. I think my second reptile ever was a leopard gecko. Cheech was my second reptile ever and I've had him for 12 years. I've also produced over a hundred baby leopard geckos and I have never once had a leopard gecko detach its tail, ever. So this isn't something you have to worry about unless you really grab onto it. But I think this is a negative if let's suppose you've got a small child or if you just don't trust yourself because you're clumsy. I don't know. Either way, I think that these are more fragile than most species. They're smaller, which might be prone to getting lost. I mean, close the lid of the enclosure or the front doors or slide the bin into the rack, whatever. I mean, I have definitely had an escaped leopard gecko way back in the day, but that was my own fault because I left the bin this much open. Another thing, and we'll call this category size and fragility, I imagine, is the fragility is just, they will get metabolic bone disease if you don't supplement them with calcium and D3 at the very beginning of their life. Now this is not really on you if you're uh, not the breeder of it. Now I'm not saying stop supplementing, I'm just saying the likelihood that they'll get ill, they'll become ill and get metabolic bone disease uh, is when they're young. If they're young and they don't get proper supplementation, they're going to get deformed, they're gonna have shedding issues, they're gonna have all sorts of issues, and you're gonna have a very sick gecko. If you get a gecko that is a juvenile or even an adult, you still have to make sure you feed them the appropriate supplementation. There's a care guide right here, by the way, so I don't have to go through it in this video, but this is kind of normal. Most lizards, you need to give them some sort of supplementation, and leopard geckos are no different. And as we stretch to find negatives in the size and fragility category, I guess we'll go with enclosure, just simply because my estimation, I think that a 20 to 40 gallon is the best enclosure for them. A 20 long is sufficient for one, and you could cohab them. Of course, watch a video like this one here to learn how to do it properly, um, but I would recommend a 40 for that, or even for one. So I guess the negative here is some people want something more showy, or some people might want something that is more like a higher up, like these ones that are behind me, which are arboreal setups. A leopard gecko needs a terrestrial setup because they're gonna be found on the ground most of the time, although you'd be surprised how often they will climb if you give them the opportunity to. So for this category, my substitution, just for fragility's sake, is 
a bearded dragon. Now it's very common, very similar. Most people, like myself included, when I was a kid, do I want a leopard gecko or a bearded dragon? I got a bearded dragon because that's what someone gave to me. It's kind of, I wanted a leopard gecko though. So if you want something a little bit bigger, something a little bit less fragile, something that a tail doesn't drop off of, but isn't too difficult to care for, I would suggest a bearded dragon. Although leopard geckos are pretty awesome. Leopard geckos are freaking awesome. All right, let's move on to number two reason why leopard geckos aren't the best pets for some people, diet. Now this actually could be a pro also. And here's what I mean. I like animals that have a varied diet. I like blue tongue skinks, even bearded dragons, things that I can feed insects, which is the staple of this animal's diet, by the way. But also I like feeding things like quail eggs, pinky mice, salads, things like that. And with leopard geckos, you don't get that opportunity. Now there are many pros that make up for this, but just to get it out of the way, these guys are gonna eat things like insects. And I guess another negative about this, although it's just one type of food, is you need to vary it up. You can't just feed them crickets or just feed them dubias or just feed them, I mean, you could, but I always recommend that you mix it up. So feed crickets once a week, dubias the next time, mealworms, whatever, mix it up. And you can even feed them pinky mice. If they are adults of an appropriate size where they're able to take down a pinky mouse, and especially if it's say a female getting ready for a breeding season, I do this sometimes, I'll give them a pinky mouse. Just because it's a bigger prey item, it helps them put on a little bit of weight if you need to. And I know some people in the comments, they're already typing, you never feed pinky mice. That's like saying you should never eat a Big Mac because Big Macs are not healthy for you. If you do it once in a while, you're fine. You can definitely do it. I guess my gripe is just, it's only insects where it is fun to watch them chase them, by the way. They do this really cool thing where they get excited and their tail wags back and forth, similarly to their display when they're trying to be defensive because that's their defense. They'll get you to grab onto their tail, they'll drop the tail and then they'll get away. The predator thinks they have a meal when all they have is the tail. It regrows, but it doesn't look the same. Now when they're hunting, sometimes they'll start to kind of wiggle that tail, like almost in an excitement and then they'll pounce on the food item. And to me, it's the cutest thing. I love to watch it, but I just like feeding things that aren't always a prey item like an insect. And that's why I like things like bearded dragons or blue tongue skinks, where I can feed them snails and quail eggs and all sorts of stuff. So I guess this is definitely a pro. I mean, this is obviously a very well-fed lady. And last night she got uh, quite a buffet of insects. She got mealworms, she got crickets. I even gave her a couple little wax worms too, but uh, I've never fed a pinky mouse to this one. Not saying I won't, but she's a, a pet only. She'll never get bread. I love bread. So to wrap this one up with maybe a substitution that might be better if you're like me and you like animals that have a varied diet, or maybe you don't want to feed insects at all. In that case, I would recommend something like maybe a Euromastix or a Chuckwalla, which don't need to eat insects at all. They can eat just salads. Or if you want an animal that doesn't need them as a staple and can eat other things as a staple, I would recommend something like maybe a Chihua gecko or better yet, a crested gecko, especially crested geckos, because with them, I only feed insects once a week and the rest of their diet is a powdered diet. So there's a few options for you, but again, I mean, like if it's not totally clear, this is a pro leopard gecko video. I freaking love leopard geckos. Okay, and number one reason why leopard geckos don't make the best pets for some keepers is just the care requirements. Now, when it comes to care requirements, leopard geckos are definitely in the easy category. So there's very few things that are that much easier to care for than a leopard gecko that would actually like be worth talking about, but we're making the list, you asked for it, let's talk about it. First of all, the just the debate that you're going to run into with substrate and cage size and things like that. Now I've been keeping leopard geckos for 12 years, like I mentioned, I find that a 20 gallon works perfect for one animal because if you go with a 20, we're talking about a 20 long, which is 12 inches wide. So it's already wider than the animal, it's 30 inches long, so we're talking about three to four times longer than the animal, and the height, whatever, who cares? So I think that that's perfect. If you want a 40, then we're talking about 36 times 18. It's a lot of floor space. And then the substrate debate, which is just basically paper towel versus reptile carpet versus whatever. Again, watch the care guide for more in-depth conversation about this. 
Just quickly, I recommend a substrate of play sand and coconut fiber that's dried out. It mixes together. If it's play sand, it doesn't bind together and cause impaction, which is why you need play sand. It's around granular sand, and that's a 50-50 mix. Or you could go with tile or slate or whatever. I don't recommend reptile carpet just because they can get their nails caught in it. It's not common, but it did happen to me once, and I woke up to a bunch of blood in the cage. The animal is fine, I learned my lesson, and reptile carpet is a breeding ground for bacteria. So anyway, I guess the care requirements are pretty easy, it's just the debate you're gonna run into on forums and care guides and things like that, that is the difficult thing to navigate through, especially if you're new to leopard geckos or maybe new to reptiles in general. Another couple things is humidity. This might be a challenge for some people. They like a lower humidity, 30, 40% around that area. If you live in, I don't know, Southern Florida, that might be difficult for you to manage. There are ways to do it, you know, basking lights, things like that, there are ways. But it might be more difficult than if you were to keep something like, say, a crested gecko, which we talked about earlier, which need a higher humidity, that might just be better for you. Or maybe temperature's an issue for you, because they do like it, not crazy, I actually think it's really easy, 75-ish on the cool end, 85-ish on the warm end, with a 90 to 95 degree basking spot around that area. So if that's difficult for you, Maybe you want something different. Maybe you want something your friends don't have. Maybe there is something that you want that is gonna be a little bit more unique. Maybe you like your coffee black, just like your metal, and you want your animal to look like it's part of an emo band. And in that case, cave geckos would probably be better for you. Okay, I'll stop indulging myself mindlessly and move on. There are a few other options too. If you want something that gets a little bit more humid, but very similar look and care altogether, then an African fat tail gecko. Basically the only difference in care in a roundabout way is that they like it a little bit more humid. So there are other options that are terrestrial type geckos with eyelids that look very similar and eat the same sort of diet. So those are my recommendations, but I'm not gonna get too much into depth because Man, if I talk any more about cave geckos, you guys are gonna think I'm being paid by Cave Gecko Society to do it. I talk about them too much. So those are your three reasons. And just before we end the video, please hit like and subscribe, by the way. I'd really appreciate it. Like, it really helps this channel more than you could ever imagine. And it, it's like a click for you. But a lot of people ask me, this is not a paid promotion. A lot of people ask me, hey man, why do you wear fancy bracelets? Wildlife Collections, I love this company. You guys have been so good to me. You are so good to the environment. Basically, buy a bracelet, which are reasonably priced, and you get a tracking number or a tracking card with a QR code so you can track a sea turtle or an elephant or a shark or something like that. They've got a few different animals you can track. It's very cool. All the money goes towards conservation. And if you sign up with this link or the link down below in the description, then you get 20% off. I love this company, I stand behind them. What they're doing for animals is absolutely amazing. So just a little plug, they didn't pay me to say it, but I wanted to give them a little shout out. And that's, that's it then. Okay, we're plugged absolutely everything. Thank you very much if you watched. You guys are freaking awesome. A special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You get videos early, discounts on the merch, extra videos, you know about the Oh, I got a misting system for the Chihuahuas now. So that's a video that's good. So if you hit subscribe, you'll see that. But anyway, should we wait for it to end? That's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Monday.